GLC is so excited to announce our new line of apparel and merchandise available through the GLC Bookstore website or through the videos directly on our YouTube channel. Browse this exclusive collection of apparel, magnets, mugs, and more, where Hebraic expression meets contemporary design. New designs are added regularly, so be sure to check back for new selections that will express your faith to those around you. Visit the GLC Bookstore online and explore our diverse range of merchandise and apparel, or watch our wide selection of programs on our YouTube channel for direct links to our new store. And best of all, visit glc.us.com forward slash shop for links to all of our online stores today. Hi friends, we at GLC would like to take a quick moment to thank you for watching our programs on this platform. And we'd like to ask you for a little favor. Would you please go beneath this video and click the subscribe button? Did you know that by simply subscribing to the GLC YouTube channel, you can help us financially support the programs on this platform? You'll need to be signed into YouTube beforehand. But if not, simply click the subscribe button and YouTube will automatically walk you through the steps to sign in or to create an account. By taking these simple steps, you will not only ensure that you continue to receive our unique programming and gain instant access to the hundreds of videos we post, but more importantly, you'll also be telling YouTube that GLC's content is worth watching and promoting. Likewise, if you enjoyed a specific program, please click the thumbs up button below, which also helps inform YouTube that this is a program worth recommending. Finally, once you have logged in and subscribed, please click the notification bell below in order to receive announcements when we post new content. As usual, feel free to post your questions and comments in the comments section below. We always love hearing from our friends and viewers. Again, thank you for watching and supporting God's Learning Channel. We couldn't spread the message of the gospel without you. Be blessed, and we hope you enjoy the show. It is good to be alive, Avi. It's good to see your face. It's good to be live on GLC. We're about to be live on the TV Towers. Uh, live from Israel, Avi Lipkin. As goes Israel, so goes the world. Live in real time on cable networks nationally uh local tv towers in west texas and beyond five different cities uh, quite a reach and of course all the online platforms as well uh with none other than avi lipkin and avi you know glc has loved you for such a long time uh you i, I believe you helped make glc and glc helped make you uh how are you doing today my friend oh everything very good i, I will never forget two months before 9-11 I don't know if there are Americans watching this program that don't oh, yeah. know what 9-11 was, but uh, two months before 9-11, I, my wife and I were on GLC with Al and Tommy Cooper, and we warned, we warned America that something was about to happen. Right. I would be flying around the United States, and at the airports, I'd say to the, it was before TSA, I was, you know, just police, you know, I said, you guys are sitting ducks. You have no idea what the Muslims are preparing for you. And the, the police always would say they wouldn't dare, they wouldn't dare to attack us. And then came 9-11. But GLC was one of the few stations that would air what I was saying. And then they said, oh, Avi's a prophet. I, you know, before they were saying I was a terrible thing. Then they said, ah, Avi's a prophet. I said, I'm not a prophet. I just listened to my wife. <laughs> and listen to your wife, you should. Uh, she not only has uh, wisdom, but she's actually uh, has been a part of Israeli intelligence. And right. uh, that brings new depth to listen to your wife, my man. <laughs> you know, th there's there's what the mainstream media says. Can't trust the word of it. But there's also what says Avi right there, boots on the ground in real time from Israel. What is the story? What's the situation on the ground? Well, uh, we are still facing a seven-front war, meaning Gaza, Judea, Samaria, uh, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Houthis in Yemen, and Iran. So, you know, we are like um, in, in that house of mirrors, you know, shooting at the different mirrors. Um, yesterday, today, uh, from Beit Lahia in North Gaza, they fired seven rockets at Zderot. 
So, you know, the moment the Israeli army pulls out, these terrorists they have hundreds and hundreds of rockets still under the ground. And there's no way that Israel can just sit back, let Hamas reconstitute itself, and fire missiles, fire away. I mean, you and I can fire torpedoes as much as we want. That's our pri- private joke there about doing shows. <laughs> I know, I know. But, but with Gaza, um, the Israeli government today mobilized two more battalions, and uh, they're going to go into uh, Gaza again. And uh, as you probably know, we pulled out our units from Gaza, except for one or two small units. Um, but we have to go in and really clean up Beit Lahia because they're firing rockets every day from Beit Lahia. Our, uh, our kibbutz people are going back to their homes in the kibbutz, and they were promised by the Israeli government that there would be, be no more missiles hitting us. So it looks like, you know, the Hamas terrorists are just, they're just dying. They're just dying for more retribution from the Israeli military, and they're going to get it. Well, yeah, you know, if, if uh, the path repeats itself, we'll get plenty of funding from Biden uh, and the left, and they don't fear re- repercussion, but they should. Uh, I've heard other reports, too, about the effectiveness uh, of the IDF. And uh, I'm telling you what, are, are, they, are they, you still being told not to defend yourself? Well, that's basically what the, the, the Biden administration is saying. And when they say to Israel, don't, they're not saying that to Iran. They're not saying that to Lebanon. They're not saying that to Gaza. And you know what? They said it to Iran. What did Iran do after Biden said don't? They sent 350 rockets and missiles into Israel. And well, by the way, there are many people who say that Biden had an agreement with Iran about that. I, I've been hearing that as well. I've been hearing that as well. It, 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 it's very frustrating, especially for those of us who did not support uh, the new Communist Party. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, again, I, I do it quite often. I call upon leaders, leaders uh, who are guiding their flocks. You need, to, you need to tell people to pray for the peace of Israel. You need to support those. Bless those who bless Israel. Boy, does that sound biblical, Avi? God, God bless you. Yes. So, folks, you know, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's almost like watering the tree that hangs you. If you go along with this communist ideology and, and you know, they, they call them Dems and rhinos. Hey, communists are communists, folks. And it's your job to oppose it as long as you have the freedom to. You know, unfortunately, that old poem written during World War II, you know, they, they came for the mentally ill, they came for the, the blacks. I said nothing. They came for the Jews. Uh, I, I was silent. I said nothing. They came for me. There was no one to speak for me. Um, if you notice, we don't see comparisons to Germany and America anymore. We're living it. And, uh, you know, here, here's an interesting fact. There's only one U.S. president that went to Berlin that saw Hitler's reconstructed Zeus's altar. And he had that recreated for his inauguration. Who was that? Barack Obama. For more reasons uh, than you know. You need to re- research that. And without a doubt, he, among others, are the one in charge. Not this stand-in, uh, whatever you call him, you know. And the world knows that. The whole world knows that. And they laugh. You know, America's become a laughing stock. And that's not right. We need We need our country back, folks. We need to support those who support Israel. We need to speak our mind, use our freedom of speech, and protect our our constitutional rights. You know, but it's been a long time coming, Avi. You've seen it too. You're a Sovietologist. Uh, where, where do you where do you think America and Israel are on the scale? You know, of of uh, achieving yet another uh, era of, of of the communist manifesto. Where are we at? Ha- haven't disarmed the people yet in America. That's that's part of the communist manifesto. You can Google that, folks. Read it for yourself, and you'll say, "Oh my gosh, that's exactly what we've been seeing done in this country from one side." So, where are we on the scale, and how can how can we change this tide right now? Because uh, we can't trust our leaders to protect us. What do you say? You know, I was in uh, Moscow. I really shouldn't be saying this on a on a nationalist American TV station because I'm an, a nationalist American and a nationalist Israeli. But I was in Moscow. And I was interviewed in Russian on Radio Moscow. 
And I said, this was in June 1994. I said, listen, communism is over. Today it's not Soviet Union, it's Russian Federation. I said, Russia should be working closely with America and with uh, Europe and Israel to fight Islam. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, no, we are still communists. Communist Soviet Union is gone, but we are still communists. And in communism, the Communist Manifesto, Communist Ideology, it talks about the, the solidarity of all the nations. Now, if there's solidarity of all the nations, you cannot be against Islam because Islam is like one of the nations that we have to be in solidarity with them. But Islam says clearly, kill the Jews on Saturday, kill the Christians on Sunday. And so when you ask me about Israel and America and the Communist Manifesto, uh, America has indeed over the last few decades got veered off very directly to the left. And they are now uh, basically preaching the destruction of Israel. They say, oh, we support Israel, we support Israel. But the fact is, that Gaza got all its weapons from Iran. Iran got its money from the United States, from President Biden and from President Obama. The missiles that were fired at Israel were in direct agreement between Biden and Obama. The United States wants Israel to be ground down in wars of attrition because Israel cannot fight a seven uh, front war for a very long time. Hezbollah, I mean, you tell me, how did they get 150,000 rockets from Iran? Who paid for this? The U.S. U.S. taxpayer dollars. I, Americans don't even know. This is something, This is the wool has been pulled over the eyes of the American people. Uh, Judea and Samaria, weapons are being smuggled in by Iran across the Jordanian border into Judea and Samaria. I should be on TV with you in your studio. I can't go to the States because we're afraid of being overrun by tens of thousands of Islamic terrorists right where I live. I'm here. I have a stupid little Beretta pistol, which is not good for anything. And my wife and I are told if and when we get the warning that there's going to be an overrunning of our community by terrorists, just you know, shutter all the windows, shutter all the lock the doors and wait for them to break in, and then when they're in the window breaking in, shoot them in the head, with the, because that's all we can do with a pistol. But this is what the people in the Kibbutzim did in the uh, socialist settlements on the border with Gaza. And who were the leaders who surrendered the Kibbutzim to the Gaza terrorists? The Israeli generals who were all bought and paid for by the U.S. military and by the, uh, the, the one world government in Washington. We have a whole administration that is controlled by Washington, and they're just waiting to get rid of Netanyahu. They're waiting to get rid of right-wing religious Jewish people because they work with the Marxist uh, manifesto. And the Americans don't even have a clue. Americans, you know, they say uh, ig ignorance is bliss. And America is the happiest country in the world, let me tell you. No, it's not. Uh, you know, everyone. <clears throat> everyone else. Uh, happy, happiest in quotes, of course. Oh, I know. And, you know, <clears throat> I've come to the harsh realization, Avi, that there are people who don't know and don't care. People who don't know and care. People who know and don't care. And people who know and don't want to know. <laughs> and they don't care. And it's not going to matter to them uh, until they're in line at the FEMA camp waiting for soup. Uh, and I, I, I just ha have to understand that there really are sheep that are destined to the slaughter. There are people who are destined to be sheep and uh, destined to die. That sounds harsh, but I, I can draw, draw no other conclusion. Uh, how, how much information you need, folks? What do you have to see with your own eyes? You know, we're currently under an invasion sponsored by this administration who also uh, rewards other nonprofits to facilitate it. If I'm an illegal fighting age man, I can get my $1,000 uh, UN card. I can get my $3,500 card from this administration and I can be taken to or flown to any city in America that I desire uh, from this administration or, or 
uh, be bused anywhere I like from Catholic charities because they take millions of dollars from the Biden administration to circumvent the legal immigration process. Yeah, I just said that. Research it, folks. So, you know, here we are. And yet there is a silent majority. Uh, I pray that it's not silent for too much longer. It seems like it's the same situation in Israel. What happens when a nation discovers they've been betrayed by their leadership? What happens when they can no longer trust the words of their media or trust they will be protected by their leadership? What usually happens? And I, I'm not very familiar with the um, the gun rights in Israel for the average citizen. I've seen a lot of photographs of young, beautiful ladies going to prom with an AK-47 strapped on, on their shoulder and and uh, the policy of everyone being in, in the IDF for a couple of years at least. I'm not sure where that lies right now, what the policy is there, but I think America can use the same kind of policy. I think everyone needs to understand what it's like to be on the front line for the country so that they can actually be more mindful when their rights that they have fought for are slowly being eroded away. But in the meantime, all we can do is pray. Or is it? What else can we do, Avi? What usually happens? How is what is the only way communism can be overthrown? Well, uh, Khrushchev, uh, I have the email still, but I have this speech in, in the UN in 1960 when he was in New York. And he said in 1960, how many years is that? That's 64 years ago. He said, your children and your children's children will be communists and they will be raised under the communist system. He said that about American children. Right. And we all know that the at Leipzig at Frankfurt schools uh, in the 1920s where, where the Soviets sent their, uh, their professors. And then when Hitler came to power, these professors fled to the U.S. And all the universities today in America, all the universities are controlled by the product products of these communist professors. Uh, we have a big problem. It's not just about Israel. Israel is the canary in the mine. But the mine is very dangerous now for the miners. And the Americans, you know, really don't have a clue. Even my own family in the States, they don't know what's going on. I try to explain to them. They don't believe me. They said, no, it couldn't be. No, it couldn't be. Well, that's what they said in Germany in 1938. You know, you have a city like New York, and it has a reputation, or shall I say notoriety, of being a Jewish town. And yet today, Jewish kids cannot go to Columbia University or to New York University because they get beaten up by Muslim protesters. And the Americans don't see anything, they don't do anything, and the, the, the directors are all communists, and they go along with this agenda. And they're blue states. <laughs> hey, listen, Obama Obama went to the Columbia. Where is Obama? Why isn't he condemning the riots? Well, because he's, he's a, a Muslim Brotherhood stooge, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw his hand at work firsthand in Garbage City in Cairo. You know, most Americans don't even know that his two-hour Arabic speech was concluded with, I'm one of you. And, uh, oh, but we want to vote for him because he's black. Well, he's black around the blacks and he's white around the whites. He's, he's biracial. Such a genius plan that was hatched from the communists and Saudi Arabia. So here we are, folks. Uh, yesterday's conspiracy theory is today's news. What are you going to do about it? Well, you need to do everything you can do about it. You know, you need to stand. You need to use your your voice. That phone you're on, 90% of your existence, you need to call a representative. Did you know that your local representative considers one phone call to represent a 1,000? They do. So these goons that are paid by the left to call the representative and complain and protest, they don't know what the protest, they're being paid to protest. You know, just reminds me of the other day, you know, uh, the Craigslist ads by Soros, you know, $200 a night and a free pipe to destroy cities and a bailout fund by Kamala and Biden. <laughs> oh, but we got to vote to kill those babies, don't we? My gosh, what lunacy, what ignorance. We... America can point no fingers any longer. Uh, what a catastrophe. 
You know, you've heard that saying, uh, hard times uh, create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. Well, we're going into the hard times. We're ready for the strong men to emerge. You know, the, the, the strongest voices for Israel seem to be muffled by the mainstream media. I wonder why that is. Could it be because the Muslims own the media and this administration? I believe they have for quite some time now. If the first, if you, if your first uh, task as president Biden was to cut fifty thousand jobs to try to cripple the middle class with the Keystone Pipeline, and and go back to to buying from our from those who chant death to America, that should have been your first clue, folks. But I still see such lunacy, you know. Uh, uh, someone I respect posted a meme about Obama. Set, uh, eight years of scandal-free. Are you serious? IRS targeting conservatives, fast and furious, uh, selling guns to to uh, drug lords from Eric Holder. You know Benghazi. Still don't know where Hillary and, and Obama were for the seven hours that our uh, you know uh, uh, embassy was being raided and and uh, our representative being raped and dragged through the streets. Yes, raped. Uh, men, women, and children. That's part of the practice when you are uh, a jihadist. But you don't hear about that, do you? You hear about it here at GLC. And you hear from Mavi. Biblicalalliance.com. Biblicalalliance.com. Avi, you have been asked to do Zoom calls with, with pastors and with other groups who love Israel. And uh, how has that been going? I, I believe you still have your weekly call with, with one of the groups you told me about. Um, catch us up on that and how people can engage you that way. Well, firstly, I would say that people should write to me at, at biblicalalliance.com where they can make comments, and I will tell them if, when and where there are different Zoom meetings. By the way, this week we're up to seven meetings. Good. And, uh, Saturday night is going to be uh, with, uh, you probably heard of Saturday Night Live out in North Carolina. Uh-huh. Scott there, and uh, that's going to be Saturday night. Actually, it'll be Saturday at noon in the U.S., but here it'll be eight o'clock right after Shabbat is over. And I have Lori Bond's group in the in Fort Worth, and I have Janice Turkey's in Hempstead, Texas. And you're uh, in the middle on uh, Wednesdays. So I'm very happy to say I got four. The number is increasing every week. Every two weeks, another group joins, and you know people are just fed up with the non-news coming out of the non-media. And uh, by the way, we have the same thing here. You know, I've offered myself here to the media in Israel, and except for Channel 14, which is right wing, Channels 11, 12, 13 won't touch me because they are also paid for by Soros. And so they only have the people that they want to have or the people who are neutral or the people who don't threaten the, the socialist uh, uh, pyramid of power here in Israel. But I'm telling you, you know, 60, 70 percent of the Israeli population opposes the socialist pyramid of power, and it's going to be uh, destroyed. It's, we're going to go over to a, I hate to say truly democratic system, because the, the, in America, many people say, oh, don't say Democrat, say Republican, no, or say Republic. And, uh, but the point is, what we have now is a, is a Marxist, communist, socialist dictatorship of the leadership in Israel, even though ben, and Netanyahu who I think is the greatest leader we've ever had, uh, he has to contend with underlings and bureaucrats and apparatchiks who are all left-wing people. So our situation is not good. Even the generals are all left-wing, bought and paid for by Washington. And uh, Washington tells them exactly what they need to do. They don't serve the Israeli government. They serve Washington. So we have a problem here. And uh, the foreign ministry, the police, civil service, all controlled by the left. Well, it's safe to say that the leftism is a cancer to humanity. Again, I didn't hear you. Leftism is a cancer to humanity. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And what happened was this country was resurrected from, from deserts and swamps and bare mountains over 120, 130 years ago. And at that time, the socialists uh, from Russia played a very major role uh, in build, rebuilding everything out of the the dust and ashes of 2,000 years of exile. But the problem is, you know, you have a three-stage missile, 
And the first stage, the booster, eventually it has to be discarded. And for, in my opinion, the, the socialist movement in Israel is the booster. It has to be discarded and go to the second stage of the missile, which is more, again, democratic, more right-wing and more conservative, and not uh, in obeyance uh, to socialist or communist dictates or Islamic dictates. They're all against Judaism, and they're all against Christianity. Oh, yeah. And, of course, we've seen that for a long time. You know, you can be anything you want. You can be anything you want, but a Christian. Right. And, and uh, I'm, this has been going on for a long time. Folks, you need to research what President Nixon did with uh, dividing the United States up into 10 parts with czars uh, over each area. Research it. This has been a long time plan uh, to turn America into a communist country. And the same measures, same things work over and over. They did the same thing in China. It would shock most people to to uh, discover that China has such a large Christian uh, base as well as a large Jewish concentration of people. Some would claim the highest. And uh, the same propaganda with media and youth and, and other uh, factors ushering in communism. And unfortunately, I know all too well about communist china and the persecuted church produced their news for a few years and um same measures same measures same in venezuela it was cool to to vote for communism now they're eating off the streets but the president and maduro and his first lady are billionaires okay same story and uh you know some someone once said history doesn't repeat itself. People just keep making the same stupid mistakes. Well, what are you going to do, folks? You want your children raised in a communist country? You keep voting the same way. If you vote left, I guess that you do. But I, I blindly follow no candidate or any party. But I I have to tell you that uh, I don't believe we would be in this situation um, had we had an honest election. Yes, I said that. Uh, nobody in the world believes that, that this last election was legit. And uh, they laugh. They laugh. You know, just go overseas. First thing they, they walk up and tell me, your media lies to you. We're, we're amazed that you're tolerating this. We're just watching, waiting for you to to rise up against this. You know, the people in Australia especially have their popcorn ready. Uh, but it's so important that we support freedom. And Israel is our only ally in the Middle East. So we have to uh, support Israel every way we can. Do that with your votes. Do that with your prayers. Do that with a phone call, please. One phone call, they consider a thousand. They do listen. They do pay attention. Not necessarily because they care about the country, but because they want to be reelected. That's what it's about. If they don't think they'll be reelected, re they'll speak up or they'll refuse to vote along with the, the rest of the leftist cancer. But in, in the meantime, here we are. And uh, God save Israel. God save America. Avi, you have not been soliciting this on your Zoom calls, but people have been giving their support uh, to Avi Lipkin through that. And let's remind them of how they can do that right now. Okay, well, the easiest way for me and also for people in the United States, if they are near Chase Bank, is to make a deposit to my account, directly to my account, Dennis Avi Lipkin and Chase Bank. And I think you have the number there on the screen if people want to make a donation. Or they can just write to me, uh, biblicalalliance.com. I will send them the information for the bank account. Um, but I, I mean, I'm watching the clock. I want to make sure I get a chance to say something which I think is extremely important to be said on this show. Go right ahead, my man. We have, we have a couple minutes. Go ahead. Okay, we have an enemy called Iran. Iran is the head of the octopus. Octopus has many tentacles, in this case, eight indeed, uh, eight tentacles. Uh, Gaza has been pretty much neutralized, praise God. Uh, there's still some kinks there. We've got to get rid of the kinks, go in again, straighten it out. It's going to take a year or two to finish the kinks. And then re-educate the people like the Allies did in Germany in 1945. The purpose is not to kill the Gaza Arabs. The purpose is to re-educate them and not to kill the Jews or the Christians. Uh, then there's Hezbollah. But the bottom line is Iran. And, you know, we uh, 
have been doing surgical attacks on specific targets of the Iranians, whether it be in Lebanon, Syria, or in Iran. And they responded with 350 missiles and rockets and uh, UAVs. Are you ready? Here it comes. Here comes the bottom line. Here we go. We got 30. Go ahead. That was coordinated with Biden. Biden is totally in with the Iranians to destroy Israel. And they have also hundreds of thousands of rockets, and they're, they're about two, three weeks away from a, a nuclear weapon. You know, so do your accounting. What, what, what's, going, what's going to happen in the next two, three weeks? Then Biden says to Israel, don't attack the oil production facilities in Iran. They have three major oil production facilities because then the Iranian government goes bankrupt. There will be massive demonstrations in the streets of Iran of millions of Iranians who are good people. They want freedom. No, the U.S. doesn't want the Iranian people to have freedom, period. The United States wants the Ayatollah regime to be in power. Then another thing they said was if the oil producing areas of Iran are shut down, then 90% of the oil of Iran, you know where it goes? China. If China doesn't get the Iranian oil, China goes bankrupt. But Biden doesn't want China to go bankrupt because that would be bad for the world economy. Well, it'd be bad for Biden. He's grown rich from China. <laughs> and you know what? The Chinese are not bad people. The Chinese also want freedom. Yes. And they can't have it because the Biden is with the communist Chinese. Biden is with the Iranians. And the bottom line, as far as we're concerned, is to destroy Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy. And that's the bottom line of the Bible block party. I get very emotional about this. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say before we conclude the program. Well, we're still live streaming. We, we've streamed on all the platforms and cable and television as well. Still live on, on social media. Still recording as well for later broadcast. You know, it's very, very important that people know the truth, but they also have some kind of directive to act on the truth. You need to vote. You need to call your representative. You need to say no. You know, BlackRock and Vanguard boast of owning everything in the world, or nearly everything, and their forced behaviors. You know, that's why when you see these major corporations go woke, which is really communist, or, or uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is really a, a sponsored civil war. Uh, how can they do that? They're losing millions. Of, well, they're, they're, they're going to be paid back from BlackRock and Vanguard. What type of influence do you think BlackRock and Vanguard have in Israel, if, if you're aware of that? I told you. Our generals, our top there leadership. You That's what I thought you would say. They're controlled by somebody or something in Washington. And they go to Washington, not in order to coordinate Israel's attacks uh, on the enemy, but they go to Washington to get instructions from Washington what to do and what not to do. And so when Netanyahu gives the orders to move on Rafah, they can't because the, the military won't do it. The top military are in rebellion in Israel against uh, Netanyahu. You see, if this were Russia, there'd be firing squads for traitors. But Israel can't do that kind of thing. So, God, just pray for us. And I ask all your viewers to pray for us. We will. And we need to do more than that, too. We need to oppose this cancer to humanity everywhere we can, every way, way that we can. You know, ultimately, God is in control. The Bible is true. And... I do believe, though, that we have the ability to delay things with righteous action. That's just me. But we're very grateful for you. And we love Israel. And you are the face of Israel to us, Avi. Thank you. And so we're praying for you. We love you. Uh, go to biblicalalliance.com, folks. Biblicalalliance.com. And get behind Avi Lipkin. We love you very much, Avi. I salute you. Salute you. God be with Israel. God save America. God save America. We'll see you next time, folks.